One very common place to encounter exponential growth is when working with something called compound interest. What is compound interest? Here's the idea. Suppose Alice lends Bob $100 at 10% interest per year. So under simple interest, each year that Bob keeps the money, he owes Alice 10% of $100, or $10 in interest. Now this situation is linear. After t years, the amount p that Bob owes is given by the equation p equals the starting value of 100 plus $10 each year times the number of years. Under compound interest, Alice thinks a little bit more, and she thinks to herself, at the end of the first year, doesn't Bob owe her $110? All right, so in the first year, at the start, Bob owes her $100. And then the interest is 10% of $100 is $10. And so at the end of the year, Bob doesn't owe $100. He owes the $100 he borrowed plus the $10 interest is $110. So shouldn't that mean that in the second year, at the start of the year, he owes $110? And so the interest is 0.1 times 110. In the second year, he doesn't owe $10 in interest. He owes $11 in interest. And so at the end of the second year, he owes 110 plus $11. At the end of the second year, he owes $121. Let's keep this going for one more year, and we'll see the pattern. At the start of the third year, he owes $121. That year, the interest he builds up is $12.10. And so at the end of the year, he owes $121 plus $12.10 is $133.10. The pattern that we see here is every year we owe more and more money. So every year we have to pay more and more interest. The pattern we see is that each year the amount owed is multiplied by 1.1. This is exponential. The amount owed is the starting amount, 100, times 1.1 to the power of the number of years. All right, so after three years, the amount owed is 100 times 1.1 to the third power, $133.10, which is just what we figured out in the table. So the general formulas for simple interest we saw before. That's the amount owed is the amount we start with plus the amount we start with times the interest rate times the time. This product gives us our rate of change. For compound interest, the amount we owe is the amount we started with times 1 plus the interest rate to the teeth power. Let's see an example. Suppose Gloria borrows $750 at 17% interest compounded annually. How much does she owe after four years? Well, the amount she owes at the end is 750 times 1 plus 0 0.17 to the fourth power. So, on the calculator, 
750 times 1 plus 0.17 to the fourth power. Rounding it to the nearest cent, because it's money, 1405.42. She owes $1,405.42. We could also ask questions about the time. Suppose Vivian invests $975 to help her make a down payment on a home. How long does it take for the value of the investment to grow to $2,000? At 4% interest compounded annually. So the value of the investment is 975 times 1 plus 4% is 0 0.04 to the power of the number of years. We want to find out what is t when p is 2,000. Again, we'll use the table function on our calculator. So y equals 975 times 1 plus 0.04 to the x power. We'll look at the table. And we scroll. Ah, here we go. So after 18 years, it's 1975. After 19 years, we have $2,054. So the answer is 19 years is the minimum amount of time for the balance to reach 2,054.